Okay, let's talk about multiplying these polynomials. And multiplying polynomials, or just doing any operations with polynomials like combining like terms, factoring, multiplying, these are critical skills, they're the fundamental skills of algebra. So you absolutely need to know how to multiply polynomials. Now, you might have uh, learned something called the FOIL technique, all right? Uh, F-O-I-L. I actually have a few videos on this. And this is a procedure that involves uh, multiplying polynomials. But this is a special case scenario. Okay, so I'm going to kind of summarize multiplying polynomials. And really, with this particular problem, it's going to give us kind of um, the big picture so you can handle any problem, right? So again, the FOIL method is a kind of a special case scenario. But what we're going to be talking about in this video is giving you the tools so you can handle any two uh, uh, polynomials that you want to multiply. Okay. All right. So we're going to get to all of that in just a quick second. But first, let me uh, quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most powerful online video-based math help programs there is. I'll let you be the judge of it, but whether you're taking a math class or need to take a full math course, my program can help you. Um, now, again, I'll leave a link to uh, that program in the description of the video. Now, as a math teacher of uh, decades, okay, I can tell you that note-taking is absolutely critical. So if you want to kind of think about where you're going in math or maybe where you've been, look at your notes, okay? If they're anything less than stellar, you need to improve them. Just as a general rule, and I firmly believe this, uh, I've just seen it through the years, those students with the best math notes have the best math grades, and the reverse is true, okay? If your math notes, you know, if you kind of like take some notes here, then you take some notes there, then you kind of have to collect them together, and then when you read your notes, you're like, you can't understand what they mean. Hey, I was that way way back in the day, but you know, you gotta work on this. This is, you know, creating new habits, new skills. You gotta really, really work on your note taking, right? But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer very detailed, comprehensive notes. I'm gonna leave a link to those in the description. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. All right, so let's get into multiplying polynomials, but let's uh, go back and take a look at a quick situation like this. Let's say 2x times uh, x plus 1. All right, so these two here are polynomials. I'm going to get to that problem I just showed you here in a second, but how do we handle a scenario like this? Well, we use our best friend, the distributor property. And the distributor property is so awesome. Here, let's just quickly look at an example. If I was going to go 2 times 40, of course, we know the answer is 80. But if I could break this up into a summer difference, let's say 2 times, mm, let's say 30 plus 10, that's 40 as well, right? 30 plus 10 is 40. So 2 times 40, I could write it like this if I wanted to. So I could distribute that 2. So 2 times 30 plus 2 times 10. And when I add this up, I get 60 plus 20, which, of course, is 80. Okay, that's an illustration of the distributor property with numbers, but the distributor property is awesome because it works in algebra as well with uh, algebraic terms. If you remember the distributor property, you can handle any polynomial multiplication situation. That's why I'm kind of bringing it up. Okay, all right, so how would I do a problem like this? Well, if you can't do this problem, then you're not going to be able to do the problem that we're going to be doing here in a second. Okay, so we would go like this, right? To x times x is going to be 2x squared and then 2x plus uh, 1 or 2x times 1 sorry is going to be 2x right so we're distributing this 2x to these terms now that's an illustration of the distributive property so let's quickly look at an example with that foil method all right something like this for example now the foil method all right, has, it's a special case scenario with two binomials. In other words, this is a binomial because there's two, it's a two-term polynomial, okay? The FOIL method would not apply to something like this, okay? And the FOIL method would not apply to the problem that we're going to be doing, all right? A binomial times a trinomial. So the FOIL method is only with this situation, okay? So again, that's a special case deal, but it's really a special case of the distributive property. This stands for first, outer, inner, last, but check this out. I'm going to show you how to use 
this distributor property, which is in fact going to be the FOIL method. So we start here, okay? We start with this term and we're going to distribute it. Boop and boop. Okay, so that's going to be x times x. That's x squared, and then x times this seven x, or this seven is going to be seven x. Okay, so I'm kind of just doing the distributor property, and then once I'm done multiplying whatever's over here by this first term, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm done with that. So let's move on to the next guy right here and do the same thing. Boop and boop. Okay, so three times x is going to be three x. And then three times this seven is going to be 21. Now I can combine like terms and I get x squared plus 10x plus 21. Okay. What I just did here is the same steps as using FOIL, but I used uh, the distributor property as kind of like my uh, procedure. Okay. So I take my first term and I distribute that to all these guys to the right, to polynomial to the right. Once I, I'm done with that, uh, then I move on to the next term, etc. Okay, so this is the best way to handle multiplying all polynomials. But the FOIL method is effectively um, just a nice little cute little term to remember first, outer, inner, last. And you need to know it, but uh, really what you need to know is a distributive property. Okay, now let's get to our problem here. So here it is. So we're going to uh, multiply this binomial. Now we have an x squared term in here as well, so that's going to make it a little bit uh, increase the fun, if you will. And we're multiplying by this trinomial. Okay. Now you can see the multiplication of polynomials and uh, written in this manner. Sometimes you could you'll see it like this. This is less common, but here. Oftentimes there's two methods called like the horizontal method of multiplying polynomials or the vertical method. Okay, and you may need to show your teacher that you know how to do both. But what we're going to do is just really get to the bottom line in terms of being able to multiply polynomials. Okay, so effectively we're going to be we're going to be doing it in this format, right? You need to know how to use the vertical uh, method. Maybe I'll make another video on that. But all I want you to do is to be able to handle any polynomial situation and get the answer right. Okay, all right. So. Let's go back to that distributor property uh, situation, okay? So whether it's a horizontal method, vertical method, doesn't make a difference. Let's go ahead and get this uh, problem rolling. All right, so I'm gonna start with this first term and I'm gonna distribute that to everything over to the right, okay? The polynomial on the right-hand side, I'm gonna distribute. So let's just kind of do it mentally here. So we have three X squared times a four X squared. What is that answer? I'm asking you, because if you don't know what that is, then you need to do some basic uh, review. All right, so three times four is gonna give me 12. X squared times X squared is going to give me an X to the fourth power, okay? So we're gonna add the exponents, all right? So we just did this, okay? Now, we're gonna continue on, three X squared uh, times five X. That is going to be 15, Okay, we're adding the uh, exponents here because it's the same base, 15x cubed. All right, now we did that. Now let's go on to this last one. 3x squared times this 2 will be a 6x squared. All right, so if this was a uh, trinomial times another trinomial, you would just do the same thing. This, this method works perfectly. All right, so I finished up. I took this 3x squared and I distributed it as much as I possibly could. So now when I'm done with that, I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna basically work this way. Okay, whatever terms in there, I'm gonna take that next term and do the same thing. So with this negative two, I'm gonna distribute, okay, like so. And then we'll start kind of organizing uh, any like terms we might see. All right, so negative two times four x squared is gonna be a negative eight x squared. So let's put that, let's put that guy right here, negative eight x squared. Right, because I have a 6x squared, so these will be like terms. And let's see here, I have negative 2, so I did this. So negative 2 times 5x will be a negative 10x. Okay, so I did that. And I have negative 2 times a positive 2, that's a negative 4. Okay, so now I could just go ahead and combine like terms. And let's write this in standard form, in other words, highest to lowest power. So that would be a 12x to the fourth. Okay, because there's no more, there's no other 
uh, other x to the fourth term, so I can't combine that with anything. So our next uh, highest degree is our uh, x to the third power, so that would be 15x cubed. And here I could combine like terms, right? Because I got 2x squared terms, so this would be a negative 2x squared. And then we'll just write the rest of this down here, minus 10x minus 4. Okay, and that is it. Okay, this is the product of these two polynomials. Now, again, I like to emphasize the value of the distributive property, okay? Um, now, your teacher very well would want you to be able to uh, um, probably use the vertical method as well, okay? I would not get, I would not um, use this as your main method of multiplying polynomials, but basically it works like this. We, I'm not going to do it, but we'll just quickly just see the procedure. It would be this number, just like you're multiplying like regular multiplication, this times this, this times this, this times this. Once we're doing that, we switch over to this guy and we do this, dot, 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 okay? Get all our terms and we add them up, all right? And so it's effectively, I mean, you're getting the same terms, okay, down here, and you will get the same answer. But um, again, this doesn't really, uh, this horizontal method is the most common, and really the biggest thing here is the value of the distributive property. The distributive property is critical in math. It is one of our best properties that um, help us out in so many different ways. So you really want to get to know it. Okay, but in order to be an expert in multiplying polynomials, you simply have to practice this. Um, you know, watching a video is one thing, but that's not a substitution for you getting good at math. You actually have to practice it, okay? Uh, but if you like this video in some way, if it helped you out, if you cleared up some uh, confusion, please consider smashing that like button. If you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll even consider subscribing to my channel if you like my teaching style. Um, I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel that, that are there for you. If you haven't figured it out yet, I love teaching math. But if you really want to see my best work, uh, follow the resources in uh, the links in the description of this video. And... Um, that's where you'll see my most uh, detailed, you know, comprehensive work. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.